and welcome back to Sydney, Australia and to the world short track speed skating being held here for the very first time. We're in the middle or rather coming towards the end now of the Women's World Championship Series. This is the fourth and final distance over 3,000 metres. Well, a totally different distance to 500, of course, and the tactics will come into this. Let me tell you the lineup straight away. Natalie Lambert of Canada with Sylvia Daigle, the joint leaders. Maria Rosi Candido of Italy. Ala Golova of the Soviet Union. Velzaba of Holland. Zuli Wang of China. And two other Chinese girls here, Yamni Zhang and Hongru Guo. Three Chinese girls in the final, two Canadian girls. Tactics should be rife, Will. As you can see the start, 27 laps of this 111 metre track. A long, long way to go. Although there's three Chinese girls in this event, 3,000 not their best distance. Well, again, we've got Daigle taking the lead, as she seems to prefer. Joint leader in the overall standings with this event to decide the outside, outright champion of the women's championships. Well, let's rejoin the race now with 19 laps still to go. And we've got Vilzeboa in the lead from the Soviet skater Alagolova. And in third place, Sylvie Daigle. And the battle will centering now on the two Canadian skaters. That's right, the, both skaters will have skated somewhere in the region of 14 or 15 races over these three days. Hence why the pace of this race is so slow. The skaters not only tired from skating these 27 laps, but obviously very tired from skating the previous races as well. Daigle and Lambert locked together, equal on points. This to decide, they need a finish in the first four to score points. And if they're both in the first four, then the one who finishes ahead of the other will run out the world outright champion. I'm surprised, Phil, that somebody doesn't try to take the race on here, simply because Lambert and Daigle know that they have to be in, be in front of one another, but they don't necessarily have to win. Consequently, somebody could take the race on and uh, Lambert and Daigle wouldn't really be interested. Right, they just mark one another. Well, the three Chinese girls, Zhang, Guo and Wang, are all skating at the back of the group and seemingly unconcerned at the moment. In fourth place there, Maria Rosa Candido, world record holder at this distance, skated in 1988. She's in second place on the, in the blue suit. She's dropping back a little bit now. Oh, she's moving up. She got sandwiched off a bit there, Wilf. And she wasn't too pleased about that either. No, I think this is Julie Wang who has the lead. And there we can see Maria Rosa Candido of Italy just moving up on the outside. A bit like cycling, this, Phil. Tactics play a very big part. Indeed, and of course, cycling and speed skating very often goes together. World speed skating champions have so often also been world cycling champions. Certainly about as rough as cycle racing right now, Wilf, as the challenge comes from Velzeboa. She wants to reclaim first place, and she gets it. There are 10 laps to go in this 27-lap 3,000 metres. Velzebor in the lead in the blue suit and Sylvie Daigle just moving in front where she likes to be Lambert closely behind her moving right into second place may have impeded the Wang there the Chinese skater the two Canadian girls now taking each other on here for what will be the world title they're marking each other wherever they go and just to so you can spot them in the white knee bands it's Daigle in the black it's Lambert and they're going everywhere together now, while coming over on the outside, Candido in that turquoise suit. And Lambert again prefers the longer distances. 1,500 metre gold medalist, second at the 1,000 metres. Sylvie Daigle, perhaps better at the shorter distances, but obviously she's been five times world champion, so she knows how to skate this 3,000 metres. Daigle now, marking closely at Lambert as they take the lead. Two Chinese girls coming up behind them. And now the pace has visibly quickened as they try to hold their gains here. Five skaters trying to go clear of the rest. 
Lambert skating very tight, taking three crossovers every every corner. And the Chinese girl moves up into Zhuang, moves up into second place, two laps to go. And as Sylvie Daigle left it too late. Daigle trying to come up there, but she's going to have a real fight in the hands of the bell here because Lambert on down goes Zuli Wang. She's got out of it. We've got Lambert in the lead now. She's being chased all of the way by Daigle. And this for the gold medal of this distance and the outright gold medal. And it'll go to Lambert. Gold in the 3,000 metres, gold in the overall competition. She takes two gold medals over the distances. She had a second in the 1,000 metres as well. And uh, that was a superb performance by both Canadians, Will. Most definitely. Natalie Lambert there looks so relieved. And there you can see Natalie tacking that bend, making sure she skates nice and tight. Sylvie coming around the outs outside. One lap to go. And I think at this point, Sylvie realises that she's not going to retain her world championship. The two Chinese girls who went there, Zhang and Guo, who skidded out of it and won't be given a placing. And then they go up to the line. Lambert takes the gold medal. Daigle is in third place. And it looked as though it was Candido who took the bronze in third slot. Daigle's in second place. There she is, the world champion. So Canada continue their domination of the indoor short track at the World Championships here in Australia. And let's take a look at it just once more, Will. And there you can see Lambert coming off that bend so tightly. Zhuang, Julie Zhuang of China going down. Obviously, she's out of contention. The other Ch Chinese girl going out, Guo. And there you can see Lambert really attacking this bend. Sylvie appearing to have a little bit of a problem with her skates on that bend and just holding on for second place. Indeed, she did. In fact, Candido almost stole the, bro the silver medal there. There's the result. Lambert takes the gold, five points. Daigle takes second place with three those two points being the crucial difference today between the world champion and runner-up in the overall competition maria rosa candido of italy is third yulia alagolova of the soviet union is fourth this is the result of the women's world championship natalie lambert is the world champion outright with 13 points sylvia daigle is two points back in second place and yam yi zhang takes third slot with five points so that was the women's individual races. Now let's have a look at the women's relay events. And this, believe me, is exciting stuff. This is the final over 3,000 meters. It's between Canada, the Soviet Union, Italy, and France. This, the relay event, the other event that's gonna be an official event in Alberville, the other event for the women, that is, being the 500 meters and the 1,000 meters for the men. And in the Canadian team, we have the gold and silver in the individual. Sylvia Daigle, Natalie Lambert, who are the strength of the team, which is defending the world title here. China missing out, not in the relay final. Canadian girls immediately taking the lead again. Missed the relay over 27 laps of this 111-metre track. You'll notice some of the girls change every lap. Some of the girls prefer to change every one and a half laps. Very much a personal thing amongst countries. The Canadians in the lead preferring to change every one and a half laps. Natalie Lombert just deciding to come in off Angela. And Maria Rosa Candida on the outside there, really storming through there. Well, with the rest in between, it looks as though Candido has some real power back in her legs here. A good change, too. Looks over to see where the challenge comes from. It's coming, of course, from Lambert of Canada. And that's Daigle who now goes in as well. And the ice suffering somewhat from these warm conditions in Sydney. You can see a lot of water on the, on the bends. And the skaters won't be too happy with that, particularly the skaters behind. A fall there from Sylvie Daigle on the push. Not before the change was affected very well indeed. And the Italian girl here, Gabriella Montaduro. And the Soviet team have forced their way back into the medal chances here now. The Soviet team are challenging Italy and Canada. Italy just changing there with Cristina Scola. Had a poor championships at this World Championships. World record, world record holder at 500 metres. 
Then the challenge now between these three nations, Canada, Italy and the Soviet Union. Explain to us, uh, Will, the last few laps rule. The skaters have on the last two laps to complete a full two laps. If they change after the line, they obviously haven't completed a full two laps and therefore will be disqualified. Now, of course, the team captain is working out, so they've got the best skater on for those last two laps. That's right. Generally, you obviously over 3,000 metres, you want to start with your fastest skater, have your weakest skater next, and then go to your next strongest skater, and finally ending off with the, with the fastest skater, which I would imagine would be Sylvie Daigle for Canada. Let's see if you're right. Canada are holding off all challenges at the minute. You can see some of the teams changing on the one side and the Canadians preferring to change on the other side every other lap. Well, this is Angela Dutrone of Canada who's in at the moment, but she's now changing. And Natalie Lombard just holding off Gabriella Montaduro of Italy in second place. Lambert Montaduro, the change for the Italians. And the gap has opened on the change though, Wilf. That's right, these Canadians are so strong at this, at this relay event. They've dominated it for years. Ten laps to go then. Sylvie Daigle really powering through these last and final laps. Annie Perot of, the, of Canada moves through. And that's Ketty Latore of Italy now, who's taking her lap in. And taking over from her is Gabriella Montaduro. And there's a real battle here going on between the Soviets and the, and the Italians. And the Soviet skate is Yulia Vlasova, who's just pushed in her teammate. And it could well be Alagolova who's gone in now. No, Wilf is saying it isn't. Well, let's find out who it is, Wilf. Maria Pilieva. Maria Pilieva is the Soviet girl. And now we have from the Soviet, Aligalova in second place, five laps to go. The Soviets really coming on strong towards the end of this race. And the Canadians may be suffering here. They've done a lot of races individually. Well, Daigle was looking a bit tired there, Wilf, as she pushed uh, her teammate into the action. And the, the Canadians physically tiring. There's the gun for three laps to go. Now, Canada have Angela Coutron in at the moment, and this is a neck-and-neck -neck battle now, the way the other two teams have come back on Canada. Canada are going to have to pull out something special now to defend their title, as the Soviet team are trying now for the gold medal. Canada are on the defence at the most crucial part of the competition, at the bell. And one lap to go, and Natalie Lumber really trying to get back. She's world champion individual. She wants to make it a second gold. And she's holding it tight on the bench. She's through on the inside. Tremendous skating, and the Soviet skater should never have lost that. That was really tremendous skating by Natalie Lambert. She's taken her team in successful defence of the World Championship here. And when it all looked lost with about 20 metres to go. That's right. Natalie is a cover of the Soviet Union there. Didn't do her job. She should have come off that bend much, much tighter. Well, Angela Perro on the right there, I must say she was looking rather shocked to realise they were now the world champions. And you can see the sadness on the face here of the unlucky Isakova who did that last leg, the last two laps. She lost it literally just a couple of skating lengths from the line and understandably, bitterly disappointed. Let's look at that again, Will. And Isakova just coming around the outside there. I think there should have actually been a change, and what actually happened was Isakova continued all the way through, so in fact she did the last three laps. Yep, absolute confusion, Wilf. They missed the change. She was then into those two laps. She had to do the last two laps, and the legs were beginning to wilt as they came into that final lap. At this point, though, it really looked as though the Soviet team had it won, and then Natalie Lambert firing on all four cylinders, really found her legs. Watch as she comes into this last bend. She looks for the gap on the inside, fingers on the ice, takes it, and then kicks for the line and wins the world title for Canada. There's the result. A win for Canada, pushing the Soviet Union, surprisingly, on this occasion, into the silver medal slot. Italy were third, so Canada keep the world championship for another year. Natalie Lambert of Canada, also the individual world champion. 
And what a championship it has been for the Canadian women. Now they line up for the Olympic Games. And sadness too for the Soviet Union. We'll take a short break. Do you remember when this was a number one hit? In the year 25, 25. And where were you when everyone danced to this? Here's one that will really take you back. Now, Teledisc presents Our Generation. 50 all original hits in one extra special collection. Our Generation, with all those fabulous fun hits. Our Generation, with the really classic hits. And the great ballads. Go on and on. Our generation. This exclusive collection is brought together on four individual albums or three long playing cassettes for only $19.99 or on three compact discs for $24.99. However, our generation is not available in any shops. But here are details of how you can get your copy. Simply call us now on these numbers. Send your Euro check, gyro payment, or UK check made payable to Telidisc at this address. And remember, our generation is not available in the shops. Settle down each evening and catch up with all the major sports stories from Europe and around the world. All packed into 30 minutes. Results, expert analysis, interviews with the personalities, profiles of the celebrities. Drama, despair, triumph, humor. The daily ingredient of Europe's top sports show, Eurosport News. Every weekday evening at 7.30, 6.30 UK on Eurosport. In association with Olympus Cameras and ESOSTAR. Welcome back to Sydney, and as I said earlier, these World Championships were held in March, and alongside me here is Wilf O'Reilly, who was a competitor in the Men's World Championships over the same distances as the women, 1,500, 500, 1,000, and 3,000 metres, and we'll put him on the spot as these World Championships unfold. Let's have a look first, though, Wilf, at the 1,500, 13 and a half laps of the track. This is the 1,500 metres final, and surprisingly not in the final, because he's sitting alongside me, I suppose, is Wilf O'Reilly. Let's have a look at the lineup. Yohu Lee of Korea, Chuzomo Kawasaki, Japan, Hernoff, Italy, Isiara, Japan, Niglisi of uh, Australia, and Campbell of Canada. Take us through it, Wilf. Well, Isiara straight out into the lead. World champion in 1987 and a 1500 meter specialist. Derek Campbell in second place. First time ever being in a world championship final. In third place, Richard Nazilski, and there's a fall, Derek Campbell's down, and Richard Nazilski of Australia. So the Australian has gone, so too has the Canadian Campbell, so the Canadians in the men's championship at least are not off to the same start, start as those of the women. And here we can see Yoho Lee, last year's world champion, pulling this 1500 meters all the way just making sure that there's no possibility that the, the two falling skaters can get back into the pack and this is some rough and tumble stuff well there's the two japanese skaters kawasaki and ishihara who's given lee one or two problems pushing him back now into second place and this is ishihara who has the lead lee is second kawasaki third and the italian hernoff is in fourth well, all of these skaters very good at this distance. Turn off a little lucky to make this final after a fall in his semi-final. But certainly Lee, Ishihara and Kawasaki, the 1,000 meter world record holder, all in contention for gold here. Ishihara continuing to see the track in front of him. 
And they have five laps to go, just coming past the two falling skaters. And there, Derek Campbell and Richard Nazilski just being lapped. Tachiyoshi Ishihara still in front, and Yoho Lee making a challenge on the inside. Lee's obviously decided he's going to go all the way. Three laps to go. And he's really stretching these skaters out. Well, all of a sudden, the two Japanese skaters are now on the defence here by this attack by Lee. He's coming round, two to go. And Lee has got the front, but can he survive to the finish now? Because the two Japanese skates are back right up behind him, and they're going to try him on the inside. And Ishihara just moving through there very nicely. But look at this. Lee has the advantage on the bend again. He went behind the Japanese skater and for home too. And Joe Yuhon Lee has taken that and understandably will absolutely delighted because that was a fine piece of skating. Excellent by Yo Lee. Last year's world champion, obviously delighted to have five points on the leaderboard looking at the overall title. There you can see the fingers up, number one. And... I thought he was going to kiss the ice for a minute there, Will, but the gold medal then for Lee from the Republic of Korea. This is how he did it. And this is the fall, rather, indeed. And he was lucky to avoid that, Lee, but he got quickly into his rhythm. Four skaters at this point were then left in the race for the gold medal at 1,500 metres. Slightly off the back of the field there was Hernoff. He had to do a bit of work to get back on, too. And there we can see Lee just managing to squeeze through the gap. Ishihara making a mistake leaving it wide open for Lee to cross the line as the 1,500-metre champion. Well, in short track speed skating, there is simply no room for a mistake. Lee gets the five points in his first gold medal of this series. Kawasaki of Japan is second, and Hernoff and Isihara were given equal third. They share the points, and uh, presumably, too, the bronze medal in the 1,500 metres. So we can move on now to the 500 metres. Four and a half laps, Kihun Kim of Korea. Hernoff is back here again from Italy. Wilf O'Reilly from Great Britain. Lucky and can the take us through it, Wilf. How are you feeling? Well, as we got to this point, Phil, I think Mark had slowed the race down a little bit here. I was obviously very nervous, wondering whether to actually attack around the outside or to, main, or to keep my place in second. Trying to hold the bend, just moving through on Mark there perhaps pulled about a meter away feeling very strong at this point and Mark's actually pulling back onto me now trying to skate very tight here slight stumble there from Mark as he bumped into myself and Kim of Korea moves up the inside and that was the closest finish spill of my career. <laughs> I saw your leg go out there Wilf and it's taken on the blade of the skate we'll have a look at that again Let's have a look at that again. Wilf O'Reilly then having to commentate on himself here as he sits alongside me in this 500-metre World Championship. And it was Mark Lackey of Canada who set out to make the early running. Wilf O'Reilly marking him closely, waiting perhaps for the door to be open so he could go through on the inside. In third place there is Hernoff of Italy at the back was the danger man, Kim of Korea. Wilf sees the door open, gets through on the inside checks his speed and then tries to hold it but Kim also looking for the way through from the back of the field and that's where the challenge will eventually come from Wilf O'Reilly now keeping the lead position in the shortest of all the distances and the fastest and furiously fought competition and then it looked as though Lackey tried to get through a little bit disturbed by the Wilf as they touched but the door was open then and through on the inside almost was Kim of Korea as they go for the line. Kim comes through, Wilf's foot goes out. It's taken on the skate and the decision by the judges, Wilf, is going to be a dead heat and the points are going to be shared. Have another look at it. Well, Phil, it was a very, very close race. You can just see there, Kim actually pushes me over, which is the first time I've actually seen it on video. So there we have it. Kim of Korea, four points. Myself again on four points. Mark Lackey of Canada on two. And in fourth place, last year's silver medalist, Hugo Hernoff of Italy on one. <laughs> well, you can't get a more exciting finish than that, Will. As we move on now to the nine laps of the 1,000 metres. And there are four skaters in the final. Wilf O'Reilly, Blanchard from Belgium, Matthew Jasper of Great Britain, and Mike McMillan of New Zealand. And it's great to see, too, Wilf, that Matthew Jasper of Great Britain is here, too and Great Britain looking good, one has to say, for the Olympic Games in 1992. 
most definitely. I think uh, to have, this is the first time two British skaters have ever made a final. Well, we've talked about the tactics of the Canadians and the Chinese, especially in the women when they had the numerous uh, qualifiers in the final. Now Britain, by way of a change and a very pleasing change indeed, have two skaters here in this 1,000 metres final. Blanchard, a very difficult state skater to get past. McMillan, surprisingly, didn't take this race out as I sort of anticipated he would. So Gert Blanchard is leading. Or was he? Yes, he still is. Determined to keep it at this point, really, isn't he? Most definitely. I think that's... I always have a little bit of a problem with Kurt. And uh, as you saw there, he's very determined once he wants to be in front. Now, it's short track, which it means just that. He's a very big skater. Does this give him problems? Because you're a very small guy. Um, not really. It's just very difficult to get past. Especially there, five laps to go. McMillan challenging on the outside. Matt Jasper sitting in very comfortably in third place. Just conserving energy. There's the door open. And Wilf O'Reilly goes through, but almost, Wilf, you almost went off there. I almost went over, I think. Again, Kurt, the left arm comes out. And uh, two laps to go. Obviously, I'm very tired at this point. Matthews nicely set in second place. Well, Blanchard, a little disturbed now as we go into the final lap. He's lost his rhythm. Macmillan seems to be out of it. The two British skaters dicing for the gold medal. And this is something we've never seen before in short track speed skating. And Wilf O'Reilly gets the gold medal. And in second place, Matthew Jasper giving them a British 1-2. Well done, boys. And the Olympics next on the agenda. Looks like you're giving him a kiss there, Wilf. No, no, he's just whispering in his ear. <laughs> uh, what were you saying? <laughs> Take wow. us through the final sprint here. Bro. Well, as you can see, I'm obviously in front. Matt's in second. Obviously, hasn't done a lot of work all the way through. Perhaps could have passed me there. I've kind of shut the door on him. Again, it's very difficult in this situation. Matt knows he hasn't got points. He knows that if I win, I've got a good chance of winning the overall title. So, uh, I mean, obviously, I was very pleased that he didn't pass me. But saying that, you know, it's all about winning. Well, he looks as delighted as you were in the first place because it's Matt Jesper who punches the air as he goes over the line to take the silver medal in the 1,000 metres. And what a nice sight this is. Two British skaters vying for the gold and silver at a world championship. Great Britain don't win too many gold medals or any coloured medals at Olympic Games. And now we have skaters capable of doing just that in Albert Veal, 1992. There we are, five points and three points for the two British boys. Blanchard hung on there for third place, and Macmillan of New Zealand, just across the Tasman Sea, he gets the fourth position. So the standings after three distances, Wilf O'Reilly with a good lead of nine points over Yoon Ho Lee of Korea, and Ki Hoon Kim is in third slot. Jesper is in fourth, along with Tutomo Kawasaki. We'll be back. Hello and welcome back to the Macquarie Ice Rink in Sydney, Australia. We're now in the final stages of the Men's World Short Track Speed Skating Championship. Wilf O'Reilly, alongside me, looking back to the month of March, is on top of the leaderboard. We're now with the final event, which is the 3,000 metres men. It's the long-distance one. It's 27 laps. These are the finalists. Wilf O'Reilly is here again. Kawasaki of Japan is here. And Wilf's major rival, Lee, is also here. Well, I think the major concern here, Phil, was what exactly the, the Koreans would do. Lee, Yoru Lee in second place there, knew he had to win to be overall world champion, and he had to then rely on the fact that I wouldn't finish in the top four. So, somewhat a tactical race. Well, we've got Blanchard going in the lead for Belgium, and we've got Matthew Jasper in second place. Let's move on a little bit to 15 laps to go now. Still Blanchard at the front. In fact, nothing at all happened in those early laps. The skaters continuing just to circle the track, uh, waiting to see where the attacks would come, and I guess everybody's expecting the attacks to come from either Korea or Great Britain. Well, most definitely, probably more so Korea, the fact that Lee and Kim both know they have to win. Kawasaki in second place, Blanchard third, Jasper in fourth, just looking around. 
What was your own tactic at this point, Will? Because you have to keep your eye on the two boys in yellow and blue, but you're quite a way down the line, aren't you? You're leaving a lot of room for error by somebody else. Well, that's right. Obviously, I didn't want to get tangled up into any falls that might have occurred. And also, I only have to finish fourth, Phil, so realistically, it's not my best distance. So anything above fourth obviously was a bonus. So really, at this point, I'm just skating for fourth place. What a nice position to be in at the final stages of a world championship. And the two Koreans and Blanchard are getting mixed up at the front now. We've got Kim Blanchard and Lee. The Canadian also there is Lackey in fourth place, the big tall Canadian. But the speed has visibly quickened now, and the two British boys begin to twitch a little bit at the back. Oh, Wilk, you almost lost it there. Yes, the, the ice is very, very bad. Obviously, the same track being skated on just after the women's 3,000 metres. And Kim of Korea in front, Blanchard second, Lee in third. So at this moment, then, that Kim is trying to set this race in favour of his teammate in third place. Lee Blanchard again is racing from the front and Lackey has forced his way through over Lee. And there's a fall and Lee's out. So Lee has gone and with it to any hope of taking the gold medal as Blanchard and Kim will get the gap now on the result of that fall and the chase is coming up from the British team behind. Well, the crowd are enjoying this event, the 3,000 metres fine. Blanchard really dicing here with ki -hoon Kim. Blanchard has the lead now. Wilf O'Reilly is trying to get on tail to the back with Jasper. The chase is on and two laps to go now. The two British boys who've done so well in these World Championships. And it looks as though Wilf has bridged the gap. At the bell now, O'Reilly has bridged the gap. And a mistake there by Kawasaki of Japan. Obviously leaving me in third place and knowing that I am the world champion. Well, congratulations are due indeed, Wilf. Uh, this has been an invidious task, I must say, commentating on yourself. But it's so nice to be in the inside, as it were, at a situation like this. Britain don't have many world champions on the ice, and we've certainly got one here this time. There is Lackey going out at the back. Then we see the mistake there by the Japanese skater Kawasaki. And that's shortly to come here. Kawasaki mixing it with the best at the moment, coming up on the shoulder of Blanchard. And then he makes this terrible mistake as he comes off the bend. He gets his feet all wrong. How on earth he stayed upright? It leaves uh, a point to conjure with. But then over the line comes ki -hoon Kim, Wilf O'Reilly in third place. And a deserved medal there too for the Belgian skater, Gert Blanchard. Well, Wilf, how on earth did he stay upright and do that? Well, I have no idea, Phil. All I was quite happy about was actually getting past him. And here, I think Kim didn't actually know who'd won. Well, as far as the 3,000 metres went, Kim took the gold medal. Blanchard was in second place, and Wilf O'Reilly was in third slot with Kawasaki, despite the dance around the back straight there, hanging on for fourth place and gaining a point towards the overall situation in these World Championships. And in the result, it was Wilf O'Reilly, two points clear of Kim of Korea and Lee, despite that fall in the last event, taking third place with Blanchard also joining him in that bronze medal position. Kawasaki, the unlucky man, just outside of the medal table. So we can now have a look at the 5,000 metres men's relay, and this is over 45 laps of the track. The finalists are Australia, New Zealand, Great Britain, and Italy. So a chance then, Wilf, to make it a nice double here, just as the Canadians did. The Australians on the left of our picture, the Italians taking the early lead, the Italian team. And Avaccio Fagoni there. Just pushing the next Italian skater, Michael McMillan in second place, and Stuart Horsball of Great Britain in third. Bad change for the Italians there. Hugo Hernoff finished fourth in the 1500 metres earlier on in these championships. A relay of this distance 
very much a tactical event. Skaters don't want to go out too hard too early on. Well, the Australians now who haven't seen too much of the front in these World Championships are now dictating the pace here at the moment over the 5,000 metres relay and the crowd enjoying every minute of it. For anybody that's a little bit confused over some of the skaters changing on one side and some of the skaters changing on the other side, basically it's very individual to teams and countries to where and, and what side they change. You'll notice some of the skaters do one, in, one and a half laps, other skaters doing one lap and changing every bend. As you can see, Australia in first place, Great Britain second, New Zealand in third, and Italy have taken a fall. So Italy are out of the picture at the moment. Stuart Horsball just been pushed into the lead. So Great Britain are at the head of it again now, being chased by the Australians. And all three teams on the track heading for medals. They're sure of that, it's only a question of which colour. There's myself. Obviously, I'm pretty tired after skated 16 races in these championships. But obviously, delighted to be in this final. Very lucky to make the final, in fact. The Dutch were disqualified in the heat after a fall and they didn't touch. Consequently, they were disqualified. And there, Richard Nazilski of Australia, just on the changeover. So it's Great Britain, Australia, and New Zealand in third. It looks like Steve Bradbury, who's in at the moment for Australia. Oh, dear me, Wilf. Well, that was incredible. I mean, what can I say, Phil? When I saw Nicky falling, there should have been a tighter cover on that bend. And I'm not sure who the cover should have been. It may have been Stuart or Matt. But obviously now that the, the title's going to be between Australia and New Zealand. And they obviously sense that picking the pace up. Chris Nicholson of New Zealand challenging on the outside. And so in the last event of this three-day championship, the battle has come down between the Antipodes for the final gold medal over 5,000 metres, New Zealand and uh, Australia. In at the moment for Australia is Johnny Carr. We've seen plenty of Danny Carr, his brother, in the outdoor circuit. This is Johnny. And let's have a look at the change. A very good change indeed now as in goes Andy... I'm um, sorry, in goes uh, Andrew Murta. And in second place, Richard Nazilski of Australia. Two brothers there, Chris McNichol, McMillan. Well, you heard Wilf talk of cover. In fact, you see the skaters circling the inside of the track here. They're supposed to shadow their men. And in the event of a fall, rush out, touch him and get back into the race. And there wasn't quite that cover for Great Britain. And they're out of the hunt now for the gold and the silver. The battle going on here with New Zealand and Australia. Christopher Nicholson is in at the moment for New Zealand. And in for Australia is Kieran Hansen. And as he said, Phil, don't forget there's still some. We're only halfway through this route, this 5,000 metres. And there can be a lot more falls to come. In fact, I said Hansen will, but this is Andrew Murtha who's in and is about to be changed. And it's John Carr of yep. Australia, just being pushed now into second place. And there's absolutely nothing here. They're not giving an inch, these two. They're staying absolutely together on the change. Well, obviously, both teams know that they're going to finish first or second, so they don't want to run the risk of falling and possibly coming, going out of the medal con contention completely. Andrew Nicholson pushing in, Christopher Nicholson. And this Australian crowd now really sensing that there's gold in the air. Well, what a great way to go out. You're playing host to these World Championships for the first time ever. And there's a real chance now, a real chance of the Australians going home with a gold medal from them. That will be marvellous. But and they've got to beat the New Zealanders first. And Brad, we're just moving there very dangerously, I thought. Some three and a half minutes still left of this race to go. Matthew Biggs uh, pushing in Mike McMillan. And in for Australia, Steve Bradbury, who now pushes in Kieran Hansen. Michael McMillan finished fourth in the 1,000 metres. 
earlier on in this event. Still no sign of a break coming. And you can see there Italy just going out of the picture, being lapped by these two countries. It's important that the, the leading countries don't get in the way of these two countries, but obviously there's, there's still medals up for grabs for third place. Ten laps to go. Remember, the last two laps has to be done by the same skater. Matthew Biggs in for New Zealand. And Johnny Carr is it's not Johnny Carr, in fact, it's Richard Nizinski who's in for Australia. Now the change, Mike McMillan goes in. And you can see Australia didn't change there. One and a half laps, Richard Nizilski, and that might cost him dearly. Let's put Bradbury in now, Will. Bradbury's taken the inside. Skates very tight, does Mr. Bradbury. <laughs> A man of experience talking. So Bradbury taking the lead just. It's still nothing in it. It's all going to be down to the last couple of laps now, that's for sure. They're just behind the Italians. They could get tangled with the Italians in the next lap or two. And the Australians obviously making a clear break. They can see the Italians in their sights trying to pull towards them. The Italians have to stay wide, and as you can see, they're not. So, the two leaders are now involved in the changing of the Italians, and this might cause a little bit of confusion here. And Roberto Peretti of Italy really shouldn't be in there. Obviously, there's a medal to be had here. And a little bit unfairly, I think, Wilf, because, in fact, the Kiwis have got involved in that melee at the back, and they've given the lead here. The two, the Australians at the bell, and remember the same skater stays on right through to the end now. This is Richard Nizilski. And Nizilski brings Australia home to the gold medal, and listen to the crowd here. It may be hot outside, but the temperature's suddenly gone up inside as well. The Australians have given the host a gold medal at these championships and it has been truly a great round of championships for the men and the women. These pictures say it all now. 45 laps of the track, 5,000 metres, the longest race of the competition and the Australians have taken the gold medal. But this was a little bit unfortunate, Wilf, this happening now, mixing in with the Italians who should have moved out of it. Well, that's right, but obviously the Italians, Phil, are still in contention with us for third spot. So really, it was very difficult for them really to know what to do when you're in that tight situation. You can see myself, I kind of move wide, letting the Australian come through, but then I tried to get back in on the track, obviously to, con to hold off the Italian Roberto Peretti. You seem to do a pretty good job at that too, Will. You didn't give him much room, did you? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that left the Australian team well clear, and the Kiwis at this stage knew now they were bound to take only the silver medal after a neck-and-neck -neck, uh, competition right through the distance. A win then for Australia. And is he delighted or is he delighted? There's the result. New Zealand in second place. Great Britain. Just snicking the third place in that battle with the Italians, so Will had to do what he did to get it. And the result was Great Britain got a bronze in the relay and, of course, a gold medal in the overall competition. That was a great result. There is Will, Will Ferrari, who's entertained us this past hour with his expert commentary on these championships. Let's hope the next time we see you, Will, you're standing in the gold medal position in the Olympic Games in Albertville. Goodbye for now. in Beijing, Italian Mirko Voyarmin sets a new world record in the men's 500 metres and China's Shang Yan Mei breaks the record in the women's 500 metres. British ice dance pair Torben